Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Do I look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? This is pertinent to today's video. Okay, you're turned off now. I'm going to talk about the basics of red light therapy. Red light comes in many different types of devices these days. This is one for your sinuses. They make things for um, your intimate area, I guess I'll say. Um, or if you're into skincare, you're probably more familiar with these. This is one that is goes on your face at night. You put it on or in the daytime or whatever. So I'm going to talk about the basics of red light therapy. So uh, first off, I will link to some below. Uh, most red light panels and devices these days are made in China. Kind of like solar panels. Almost all of them are made in China. And most of the red light devices are made in China. Even the biggest names around, they're made in China. Huga, Saluma, Light Stim Pro, Mito. Most of them are made in China, and I have a hack on how to find which products and companies are buying these from China and where and what manufacturer they're buying it from. I will link to a video below, uh, and the site is Import Yeti, and I've kind of got a tutorial on how to do it. So you can use this website to reverse search a brand uh, and then who their, their manufacturers in China, and then you can go to Alibaba and search it yourself. It's an affordable way to buy it, or you can buy it from any of these um, other companies. So, um, okay, so typically they're used in a lot of variety of ways. Masks, the thing I just showed you, panels, big panels, little panels, small ones, full-size ones, things like that. Uh, the wand for intimate areas. Um, sleeping bags is a common one now. It's a, just basically it looks like a sleeping bag, and it's got red light uh, in it, and you get in there, and the red light helps your skin. Tanning beds now. A lot of tanning salons offer red light therapy. The irony of it. They get you coming and going. They get you doing the damage to your skin by tanning. And then they get you trying to heal the damage you've done to your skin from tanning. Nose devices. I just showed you that. Um, scalp devices. Hats. Things like that. Wands. Everywhere. There's tons of different ways to use it. And it's typically best when used 20 to 40 minutes a day. Um, three to four days a week and typically no results are most noticeable after three to four months um, or whatever you prefer you can use it for 10 minutes a day every day or 10 minutes twice a day whatever it's consistency is going to be key um, and the studies show the closer it is to your skin that you're wanting to treat if you're doing it for skincare reasons the more uh, positive quicker faster results you'll have so closer to skin is better versus a panel that's I don't know, five feet away, things like that. Closer, some research is showing. I actually linked to an article in the newsletter about that. It shows um, a lot more benefits if the mask is closer to your skin. And if you're subscribed to my newsletter, I did a little article about this a while ago with some funny pictures of me. So, um, okay, so there's different spectrums, and typically it's called red light therapy, but it, it encompasses many different colors. Blue light is great for acne because it doesn't penetrate as deep as the red light does. It's a different spectrum, so it penetrates less deeply and therefore is able to be beneficial for your pores uh, and just slow breakouts and kill that bacteria that causes breakouts. Yellow light is a common one that's been used for hyperpigmentation. Green light, spectrum that's used for redness and calming red irritated skin. Red light, most popular one for skin. Skin restoring helps with wrinkles. Um, near infrared light has been used for pain, uh, pain in tissues, pain in muscles. Um, a lot of these masks have different settings, so you can uh, click on them. So this one, for example, has infrared. It's got red light, it's got blue light, and then it's got the yellow light. You can use them all together. You can use them separately. You can set them on a timer, things like that. Or actually, this has uh, yeah, red light and then continuous pulse. So, um, And then it mentions on here... The uh, wavelength, although more advanced ones will have more options. Some of the panels, you can specifically click which wavelength you want. 630, 633, 655. Infrared light, um, near infrared, the one that's used often for pain. I actually have a belt, an infrared light belt that I've been using on my back for back pain. In my opinion, and from some studies, if you're using a mask like this, you do not want to use the infrared setting on your face or anywhere you don't want hyperpigmentation, especially melasma, 
from what I understand, the infrared setting can cause hyperpigmentation and melasma to get worse. So if you can use a specific spectrum or red light, um, that's the way to go. If it offers two different settings or three different settings, uh, don't use the infrared light on your, any skin you don't want to have hyperpigmentation, don't use it. Be careful with it because there are some people that have said, I've got red light and now it's making my skin uh, hyperpigmented and I'm getting dark spots and things like that. And my hunch is it's from the infrared setting. It can be great for pain and things like that, but the infrared setting, cautious on skin. Uh, that's from what I understand. So be careful with that. You don't want your skin to end up um, worse or more hyperpigmentation than you have it before. Um, there's also different settings, like I mentioned on mine, mine has pulse or continuous. Um, there's not a heck of a lot of different studies done on the continuous version versus the pulse version. Sometimes they, the theory is the pulsed version uh, is better for your skin for some reason, but there's, I haven't really read anywhere that's really described. Continuous is better than pulse for this reason or that reason. I, I just use continuous. I I don't mess with the pulse version, but there's just not a lot of real things, con you know, that say the pulse is better than just continuous use. So, okay, so general benefits of red light therapy, it can help with hair growth. From my understanding, it cannot bring back hair follicles that are dead. It can't bring back somebody that's completely bald to having a nice head of hair but it can help with hair growth, slow hair breakage, and perhaps even help with scalp um, dandruff. Some people have said it helps them with that. So um, it can help in, help encourage hair growth from shafts that are still uh, growing hair, but it can't necessarily bring back something from nothing, from my understanding. And there's a lot of uh, different hats and things like that. So it can help with inflammation and in skin. This is why there's the devices for the nasal area. Uh, there's some people that say it can help individuals with traumatic brain injury. So there's some that are much more expensive than this one that, uh, they think if you put it in your nose, it can help with brain injuries. This is still a relatively new field. A lot of the studies I will link to below are still relatively recent. There's not, a, it's still a pretty new field. Um, the blue light I mentioned can help kill bacteria that causes P acnes um, and it, you know, they know, and if you ever did use tanning or things like that, sunlight uh, helps slow breakouts and helps prevent acne and things like that. So they're thinking the same type of way that the sunlight helps with acne, the blue light helps in the same way. Um, and it can help slow the uh, production of oil and glands and things like that. So they're thinking that may help in the same kind of way, just a different type of uh dispensing of it um, some people help believe that the red light helps with their eyes and helps them see better uh, and uh, yeah so the the tbi thing which is very interesting and there's some uh, devices that are extremely expensive for helping with uh, traumatic brain injury and things like that so um, and there's some other ailments that red light therapy has been shown to be beneficial for um, and I'll link to a link that has a whole list of them, a whole grid of them. Raynaud's disease, age-related macular degeneration, which has to do with the eyes, um, burn scars, burning mouth syndrome, Bell's palsy, COPD, depression, fibromyalgia, lymphedema, radiation, dermatitis, and rheumatoid arthritis are some potential areas that this might be beneficial for. And now I'm starting to see some of them for the gums in the mouth area, which I'm thinking about trying I don't know it might help with gums swelling gums and things like that skin benefits that's the main thing we're here for skin benefits of red light therapy acceleration of healing especially after uh, procedures like micro needling or peels uh, and my esthetician that I see who's done some um, micro needling on me after she does a micro needling treatment she does the celluma mask over my skin for about a half an hour and it seems to help with healing and calming the skin down. Acceleration of healing of incisions as well as increased healing with scars and scar tissue. Increase in skin firmness and elasticity. Decrease in skin laxity due to increased in collagen production. Increase of, increase of pro-collagen production. Collagen basic fibroblast growth factors. 
increase in wound healing due to the synthesis of new collagen, decrease of redness in skin and calming of inflammation, and then improvement of facial texture, fine lines, and pigment issues. So um, it helps with a lot of different things. The key is being consistent with it um, and other questions on how to use it. Typically, I what I do at the, the end of my night, I start my skincare routine by cleaning my skin and then I'll do the red light therapy and then I'll come back and do my routine. Uh, you want to make sure your skin is clean because things like sunscreens, if they're on your skin, they're going to not help this penetrate so well. And uh, sometimes you can use like a light serum and things like that, but don't, don't go too heavy on your routine before you use it. I think I've heard green tea serums are a great one to use in conjunction with it, but don't get too much on your skin um, before you use it because you don't want anything blocking it and things like um, certain ingredients would stop it from penetrating so much. So, um, And other factors that influence results, device use, does it have the pop proper spectrums? Certain spectrums have been more proven than others. Are you consistent with usage? How far close to the area you're treating is the product or the device? I mean, some of these panels are meant to be used from like a far, far length away. Not sure they're gonna be as beneficial as something that's right there. Um, the closeness of the device can it directly impact the results closer is better. And for some people, it can take six months for noticeable results. And a lot of people, even myself, uh, start to become less enthusiastic, uh, you know, after you've been doing it for two months and you aren't really noticing much, you might start to slip or put it off or not use it as consistently as we were before. Consistency is going to be key. Give it several months, just like you would a retinoid, you know, retinoids, the first month you're using it, probably not going to notice anything great from it. In fact, you might notice it's more causing more irritation, things like that. But when you continue to use it, then you start to get the benefits and collagen just doesn't, you know, grow over, overnight. You need months uh, and maybe even longer than that. So I think it's worth investing the time in it if you have the time. Um, you know, if you've tried other devices and aren't as consistent about, about using it, then maybe trying a panel where you don't, it's not as intense. And you, the panel, if you're using the panel, you can still do other things at the same time, but closer, better. So... Um, yeah, so I think it's worth trying for a lot of different reasons, especially if you have acne-prone skin. Uh, after procedures or peels is a great way to use it. Help heal that skin up faster and help with more collagen production, fine lines and wrinkles. So, um, yeah, so more and more research. I will link to several studies below. You can check them out in different links that have some different comments and thoughts on it. So, um, I think it's something worth researching. A lot of people don't believe in it at all. If you don't believe in it, I get it. Still do research because it's still a lot of new information coming out. So I think I think it's worth reading and considering for everyone. So um, anyway, leave your thoughts below. Uh, if you have thoughts, if you're a pro or anti, or if you've used it and didn't like it or used it or impressed, anybody leave a comment with your thoughts. And I will see you guys more tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.